Hello and welcome to Miss Charlotte Astrology. My name is Charlotte. I'm a full-time working astrologer and on this channel I analyze the astrological charts of public figures. Very often they are celebrities or politicians or serial killers or royalty. But today I will be analyzing the astrological chart of a singer. He was one-fifth of the boy band One Direction and sadly he passed away like two-ish, three-ish weeks ago. Um... He had a lot of substances in his system, potentially a hallucinogen, and he somehow fell out of a hotel balcony in Argentina and plummeted to his death. Um, and yeah, it was very traumatic and it just, just, it, it's awful. It's awful. And he was only 31 years old. So, and he has a child. So it's a very, very sad situation. Um, since he's passed away, there's been lots of talk about him, his mental health, his behavior, his virtues, but there's been a lot of talk about, um, his poor behavior as well. So what I wanted to do was analyze his chart, look at the good, the bad, and the ugly as respectfully as I possibly can. I waited a few weeks. People really jumped on me. They're like, get on this now. I want to know his chart. I want to know the transit. When someone dies, especially as horrifically as he died, um, for me, I don't, I don't feel right jumping on that because I know it's going to get a lot of views and maybe it'll make me a lot of money. And, but I just, it didn't feel right. I wanted to wait a little while and process it a little bit. Um, just, just so I could pick my words carefully. This is actually the sixth or seventh time I've recorded this because I thought, oh, I didn't do him justice or I didn't, you know, I wasn't respectful enough. So I'm really, really trying here. Anyway, hopefully I do a good job today. All right, um, before I dive in, I want you guys to know I do offer readings. I do five-minute focus readings for a specific part of your chart or if you want to talk about something specific in your life and you would like me to look at your chart in relation to that, I do offer that service. So five-minute recorded reading of me that's sent to your email. I also do 15-minute readings, longer readings, which are full analysis of your chart or a synastry or, tr or transits. Again, a 15-minute recording of my voice sent to your email. Um, I also have YouTube members. It's a way to financially support me because I do this full time. Um, and I do videos that you guys request. So I, someone requested a JFK Maryland synastry video. I've just put that out and I'm currently working my way through the North node through the signs and houses. If that is something you're inter interested in, it's like $5 a month. Um, there's no, I don't have multiple tiers. It's just one tier at the moment. Um, still working out the kinks because it's a new, it's a new service. It's a new thing. So yeah. Um, yeah, it's the best way to support me. Thank you so much. And if you can't do any of that, please like subscribe and comment and help me with the algorithm. It all contributes. And I'm so grateful for your, for your help. <laughs> okay. Um, so let's dive into Liam Payne's chart and have a look at this troubled young man. So I don't know much about I don't know much about uh, One Direction. I'm a bit old. I'm I'm like a decade too old to really care. But I was a teacher in my early 20s when they became really big in like the early 2010s. I was teaching high schoolers, uh, middle schoolers, and they were obsessed. Like there were posters, like they would have stickers all over their books. So I have fond memories of teaching children that enjoyed One Direction. So <laughs> that's as far as it goes for me. I've never seen a live performance. I don't know much about him. So this is not a completely blind reading, but it's semi, the vision is blurry. The vision is blurry. All I've got is the chart. So if you want to chime in here and I say something that co that correlates with what you know about him, please put it in the comments. Um, I'd be, pr and, and if there's something that isn't, you can put that in the comments. So thank you so much. All right. So, um, He's a Scorpio rising. You see, he's Scorpio rising. He's a Virgo, Virgo sun and Mercury, a Mars and Libra, a Venus and Leo, and a moon in Aquarius. So oof, lots of lots of stuff. It's a lot of drama in his chart. Okay, so let's talk about Liam Payne in terms of his career. This man within the group of One Direction, I don't know much, but he thought himself as the leader. I've seen one piece of footage of him where he says that Simon Cowell promised that he would make him a solo singer after One Direction and make him a big star. That there was a promise to Liam to make him the either the focus of the group or the the you know like a solo singer, like turning him turn him into a big star. Um and I'm not surprised with a son on his midheaven because he fancied himself a leader. I 
I do think he was talented. Um, one of my younger friends, she's in her mid twenties, and she, um, my cats are fighting outside. <laughs> uh, one of my friends in her mid twenties said to me that he was pitch perfect. He was one of the better singers and or dirt dancers of the group, and he was kind of like he would try to lead them. So I understand why. You know, there was a lot of friction in the group. If you've got a neurotic Virgo that wants to lead the charge, it can be really, really difficult. Um, but he fancied himself an artist, an artiste. He fancied himself as, you know, um, someone who who could make a big impact in the world and, you know, change the world through his art. Um, and I believe he could have done that. I just don't think it would have been through music. He really loved music and that's fine. But out of all the, out of the five, isn't he the one that had the least successful transition as a solo artist? Um, he was even, I think he was dropped by his record label a few days before he passed away. And that contributed to his, um, um, his, his breakdown, uh, which led to his death apparently, apparently, allegedly. So yeah, he was someone that really, he saw himself through the prism of his career. And when you have your son in the 10th house, your career is very, very tied to your identity, you know? So he would have been like, I am Liam Payne, the singer, the artist, right? Um, he also has Mercury up here. Mercury is, is speaking, communicating. So he, I mean, that's the teacher. I wouldn't be surprised if he thought him, of himself as, like, the coach in one direction. Like, he tried to get all the – was he like that? Was he a bit controlling with the group? He would tell the boys what to do or um, he would reel them in. He was a bit of, like, a sheepdog with the sheep. Like, come on, get in there. Let's cooperate. Let's, you know, I'm just wondering. Put in the comments. Let me know. But I'm seeing someone who sees himself as the leader and the teacher coach within within – um, a group setting, like a work setting. That's what I'm seeing here. And I think he really, really wanted to be a solo artist, but have you noticed that there's no sex tiles? There's no blue line. There's no sex tiles. There's no trines to that Mercury in that sun. There's nothing supporting him. So I think he needed to be in the group. He needed to be in a group in order to be effective. Um, because I don't know if he would have become famous for singing and dancing without the help of a team or like a TV show. Um, but he fancied himself the leader, which is which is a bit dangerous in his. It's it's a bit dangerous to do that, um, with placements like that. <sighs> um, he has his Mars and Libra. I mean, Mars and Libra doesn't necessarily like to fight. It doesn't like to go to war. A Mars and Libra would prefer to keep the peace. They fight for the peace. That's what I say about Mars and Libras. They fight for the peace because Mars rules Scorpio and Aries, which are the warrior signs. Libra is not a warrior. It's a diplomat. Um, so he, ideally he would fight for the peace. He didn't like an argument, but that Mars is in the 11th house. So if he didn't fight with his fists, which I feel like he did, he's got a square here. When he lost his temper, he really fucking lost his temper. Like physical violence was like a last resort when he lost his temper. But, um, and if he did that, it was in a public place. Like he would lose his temper in public. I don't want to say he lo he lost his temper all the time, but um, if he was in a situation that was out of his control, a certain environmental situation, because Neptune and Uranus are, are, are big planets, they're generational planets. So if you've got a generational planet squaring your Mars, things that are out of your control may set you off. Um, and when, for him, when that did happen, it was in the 11th house of the public. He would lose his shit in public places or he, like, I would count a hotel as a public place. Um, and he smashed a TV and he broke things and, um, yeah, so there's a lot going on. Uh, with the Mars in the 11th house, there's war with colleagues. There's war with colleagues. He did, he'd got into a fight with his bandmates quite often, didn't he? Um, and with Mars in the, Mars in the 11th house can be good. Uh, it can be very influential. This is someone who could lead a pack, but there are also people who in, you know, in trying to lead the pack can have, they can, they can get, they can, they can get into trouble. They can have the pack turn on them. And that happened a lot. And the South node was moving, is moving through Libra right now. So he was releasing control 
Um, Mars is your phallus. It's your dominance, right? It's your masculine power, right? It's sex. It's fighting. It's war. So if the, the South Node currently moving through that in that 11th house, he was losing favor with people. He was losing control. Um, he lost control during this period and he was losing favor because he was acting out. He was acting out. Um, Mars in the 11th house is someone who publicly acts out. Think Prince Harry when he was young go you know going out into the streets and attacking paparazzi it's that that's it's that energy even though his mars is in a peaceful sign it's in a conjunction with jupiter which just amplifies this angry energy and it's squared with uranus and neptune which play into the third house of siblings and friends so he's got difficult relationships with colleagues he's got different relationship difficult relationships with siblings and and peers so there's just a lot of drama in his social houses, in his in his social life. Um, yeah. He was trying to dominate. He was always trying to – I don't think he would process it that way. I don't think – I mean, is it sexist to say he was a man, a young man, and he wasn't that self-reflective? Um, but he was trying to dominate. In his mind, he was probably thinking, I'm trying to help you. I'm trying to help people. I'm trying to be, you know, but really he was, he was, he was trying to dominate um, a, a lot of situations where he shouldn't have been doing that. Like, I'll give you an example. Him going to Niall Horan's concert a few weeks before he died and then putting on a show for all the fans. He made that show about himself. So I don't – was he trying to exert dominance over Niall with that or was was he just high? Like, anyway, that's an example of how a Mars in the 11th house can act out and do stupid stuff. Um, yeah. So with this placement here, he's got Venus and Leo, which is a very idealistic Venus. I mean – Venus and Leos, they want a relationship. They want forever love. The problem is, is that they're in love with love. And they're, and I was just, I just dealt with a client recently who says, I'm, I'm in love with love. I just love love. And I'm like, well, you should, well, so you don't love people for the virtue of who they are. You only love because you like the feeling. When people say, I love love, I'm like, what? Because my Venus and Taurus doesn't understand because I really enjoy my relationships are based in practicality, you know? If you can't show up on time, I don't fucking want to be your friend. Mm -mm. I don't want to be your lover. I don't want to be your friend because you can't show up on time. So bye-bye, you know? Um, sometimes for some people that doesn't matter. They, you know. Uh, a Venus and Leo loves a grand gesture, big bouquet of flowers. I'll fly you to Milan and we'll fuck in a hotel for hours and eat oysters and chocolate and you know like Venus in Leo is a very kind of glamorous it's a glamorous Venus it 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 can be quite hedonistic because it's Leo <laughs> it's very it's a bit it can be self-absorbed um and they want to feel pretty they want to be with people that make that can feed the flames especially if it's a man with a man with a fire placement, a fire Venus, they need something to burn. They want you to always throw logs onto the fire. Very, very needy for affirmations. He was very, like, Liam was so desperate for approval and praise. So much so that he got buckle fat surgery or a chin, a chin or jaw implant or something. He ruined his face over this um, because he wanted to be beautiful. He wanted to be worshipped. He wanted to be the center of, you know, he wanted to be the, he wanted to be the center of the world. You know, I mean, that, that was his downfall. Um, he also has Chiron in the same sign as his Venus. They're not in a conjunction, but they are together. So if you've got Chiron on Venus, there's an insecurity around your physical appearance. Even if you're incredibly beautiful, maybe there's an anxiety that maybe one day you won't be beautiful any, anymore. Maybe you're not beautiful enough. And there can be difficulty with learning to love oneself. When when Chiron and Venus are together, that's a wounded heart. You had a wounded heart and a wounded sense of self. And on top of that, it's intercepted, you know. So what is love? 
he did like I think sometimes he felt like he didn't know what love was and when you have an intercepted Venus it's like what is love for myself what is love for others what is this thing and I'm wondering if he tried I'm wondering if he tried to find that by doing these grand romantic gestures and like making love in these hotel rooms with the oysters and the chocolates and like because it's in the it's in the ninth house as well and the ninth house is like long distance travel and journey so he he was a hedonist and he he tied in adventure with love and I think he often mistaken love with lust that's what it's giving here um Venus in the ninth house and Venus in Sagittarius people will fall in love with people that are a lot older than them or a lot younger than them or with with foreigners that's what I that's what I've noticed and he did do all those things I think his last two girlfriends were American I think uh Cheryl Cole is that her name um the woman he had a child with was a, about 10 or 11 years older than him and I think they met on the show when he was a teenager and they got together well after the show and well the show ended when he got out out of the show I think they ended up together for a while so that tracks that tracks he falls in love with women that are a lot older than him younger than him um, I think his last few girlfriends were in their 20s, right? Um, at, or, and we could also bring up the young, young girls that he was allegedly messaging on Instagram and other social media platforms. Mm. So, yeah, a lot younger, a lot older, and foreigners. Um, th that seems to be uh, what he – that was what he enjoyed. That's who he enjoyed dating. Now, um, what makes this – harder more difficult is that he has a moon in Aquarius with Saturn so let me just pan out a little bit so when your Venus and moon are in opposite signs it's difficult because your values are not are, are not aligning with your emotional nature right um so his hedonism makes a lot of sense his dis his his disconnection from his himself and then and then diving into this hedonism to to numb his pain it makes so much sense with this with this Venus Moon opposition because really you know what he was he was a, a Moon in the third house is someone that really loves their local cafe their fish and chip shop their local library like they're really people that expand their sense of home beyond the walls of their house they expand it into the wider community he's a I don't know what where he's from but it's giving like a small, a, a, you know, like a small town boy that really ha takes pride in where he's from. Like that's that energy. Even though I see some dysfunction here, there's some dis there's some dysfunction here because if he had a happy family situation, like a solid family situation, he wouldn't have, he wouldn't have been doing the things he was doing. Um, but a moon in the third is someone that makes friends with pe a lot of people in the community that really throws themselves into like volunteer work and like it's very it's a it's a nice grounded moon I like a third house moon they make it's it's popular you know but it's on a local level but I want to go travel around the world and fuck this hot girl in a hotel room and eat those oysters and chocolates and drink everything and snort coke So the things that he was attracted to, the thing like the, these hedonistic fantasies took away from his ability to connect with that local community. And he had Saturn, he has Saturn here as well. And so when you have Saturn and the moon together, that's not an easy home life. If Saturn and the moon are together, that person can be emotionally immature. Very, like it's very, it takes a long time for them to emotionally evolve and very often that can happen because at an early age they had to grow up really quickly. I feel like based on what I'm seeing here, so people in the comments, please comment below if you know what I'm talking about because I don't know his life. Something happened when he was really young and it may have involved his mother. I haven't seen hide nor hair of his mother. I don't know if she's still alive. I don't know. I don't know. Maybe she is and mum and dad are happily married. I don't know. But this does not look easy. At an early age, he had to grow up really, really fast. Like he had to... He had to Something happened which forced him to mature quickly and that stunted him in the long term. And that's what I see with a lot of moon and Saturn people. People with moon and Saturn together, 
they are emotionally stunted and immature, emotionally mature, because they experienced a trauma that made them grow up fast at an early age. And sometimes that can be the death of a parent. It could be, it could be, it could be like a move, like they had to move house and move to a new city or a new country. It could be a divorce. It could be right. That's what it's giving here. So if people know, because I've only, I've only seen footage of his father. I haven't seen footage of his mother. Does anyone know what's happened to his mother? I literally do not know. I'm gonna look up. Uh, I'm gonna look it up after this and see where his mum's at. But something's happened here. And the interception of the moon is someone that lacked nurturing as a child. So maybe mum worked too much, or maybe she was literally just gone for some reason. And the Saturn intercepted is someone that lacked structure as a child. He lacks structure. He lacks routine. The father was somehow also not present. There's something here. Someone tell me what's going on here. So yeah, um, this is not easy. So it's sad because it would have been really nice if he connected to his local town and his, you know, had, had that, had that around him, um, had a community around him, a third house, a nice third house situation around him. That would have helped. It would have made, you know, um, a, a career going south a lot easier. It would made a, it would have made a failing career a lot easier if he had a home to return to. But when your Venus is in the ninth house and Leo and you're insecure and you're, you know, you want to exert dominance, you want to shine, like then of course you're going to be throwing yourself into hedonistic habits and behaviors. And so, yeah, that's not easy. Venus and the moon opposition is not easy because they're the feminine planets. They're the two most intimate parts of you. So when they're in opposite signs, you're like two different people. Like, ugh. like, do you think... This Venus and Sagittarius, these these American, these young American girls that he was flying over all over the world with, do you really think they would have settled with him in in Hackney or whatever or, or Liverpool or where the fuck where he was from? Do you really think that these young American girls from a, a sunny part of California would have come to England and settled with him and been involved in the community, third his third house like that? No. Absolutely fucking not. And that would have been difficult. So when his girlfriend left that hotel room, because when she left that hotel room, he was no longer the Venus in Leo. He became the Aquarius moon, lost lost overseas, unable to, to process his emotions. Unstable. Because moon in Aquarius is unstable. Love you guys. You're sensitive. You're so sensitive. You're so sensitive that you turn off your feelings and very often you do destructive shit so you don't have to feel them. So. <sighs> it's just a shame. Like he was, he had so much untapped potential. I felt like he could have really done well in a, like, as a, like a speaking career, teaching, coaching, podcasting. Like his North Node it played out as a bit of, it's a bit of a vagabond North Node, you know, ultimately he was doing Sagittarius stuff and being really reckless with his, with his wallet. But had this played out in a positive way, I would, if he was my client, I would have been like, you need to put money away from your son. You need to diversify your skill set and you need to learn how to do things other, other than singing and dancing. You need to learn how to do other things so that you can monetize those gifts and put away money for your children because a north node in the second and I know it's in the first but it plays into the second a north node in the second is about learning how um how to manage money and become secure like buy a house like create a solid foundation when you have a north node in the bottom half of your chart you have to create a solid foundation this isn't a foundation but in the end he squandered that you know because he was lost he was a lost little boy He was emotionally immature. He had no one, nowhere to turn to. <sighs> Poor guy. Anyway, that's all I have for you guys at the moment. Um, this is my seventh take of this reading. Um, I ho really hope I was respectful because um, I was. I, I'm. I'm pretty honest. I'd like to be really honest. I, I think Leanne Payne had a lot of talents, and I, I think he had a lot of untapped potential, and that's why this death is so upsetting because he had so much to look forward to had he just survived, had he just survived, you know. 
So, you know, I'm um, sending Liam and his family love and prayers and um, wherever he is, um, I hope he is happy and um, is doing well because I, yeah, his life was, his life was very, very painful. Fame is a bitch. This is why when people come to me and they're like, oh, am I ever going to be famous? Am I ever going to be known? Why do you want that? Why do you want that? People that hunger for fame scare me a little bit because they're searching for the love that they never got as a child. That shit is destructive. Go see a counselor about that. Being famous is not is not the thing. It's not the thing. Being famous terrifies me. I have no planets in my 10th house. Ugh. Anyway, um... Thank you so much, guys, for the, your support. Um, please like, comment, subscribe. Remember, my, I've got I've got my um, um, MP3 readings, and I also have my YouTube members if you'd like to financially support me. Okay. Um, so thanks so much, and I'll let you guys go. See you in the next video. Bye.